Hey Summoners, how's it going? The new patch is out and with it, plenty of changes. My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be letting you guys know exactly what's happening on patch 11.19. There are a number of champion balance changes this patch, so make sure you hit that sub button and let's go ahead and get started with the video. But before we jump into all those changes, let's talk about some new content, the skins. With Worlds coming up, we have a new Jarvan skin to highlight the apex of the competitive season. There are also new Dawnbringer and Nightbringer skins. Dawnbringer Morgana, Yone, and Vex, as well as Nightbringer Lilia, Trindamir, Kane, and Kane Prestige are now available. These skins look great as always, so give them a look. With all that being said, let's go ahead and run through the balance changes as well as our updated tier lists. First is a nerf for Kennen. He's been performing a little bit too well in the mid lane, and in addition to this, he's starting to gain some traction in competitive play for his safety and reliable scaling. To make sure that he's not an impressive draft demon at Worlds, he's being nerfed. His Q damage was nerfed by 10, while the AP ratio was reduced by 5%. Although it's a small damage nerf, it does add up during the laning phase. It's typical to land several Qs, so losing anywhere between 10 to 30 or even 40 damage can easily be the difference between grabbing first blood or falling victim to a close 1v1. In terms of burst damage, it's not a huge change and overall, Kennen can still stay in the A tier this patch. Another change is for Aatrox. You might be surprised to hear that he was buffed, so expect to see a diverse top lane meta at Worlds this year. His W's cooldown early on was reduced by 6 seconds, and this is a huge buff whether he's winning, losing, or even in a close matchup. The reduced cooldown makes it easier for him to farm, makes whiffing more forgiving, and also gives enemies less time to take advantage of his high cooldown. Since this ability is usually max last, it's a buff for the majority of the game. Although he's in the A tier, we'll be keeping an eye on him to see if this change pushes him into the S tier. Togath was also buffed, his Q's cooldown was reduced by a second. This is a huge buff as this brings it down to a 6 second cooldown, lowered further by any ability haste that he builds. It definitely helps him have more presence at all stages of the game, but for now we'll be leaving him in the A tier. Gwen also was given a buff, although a minor one. With a little extra health regeneration, she'll have a slightly stronger laning phase with some extra HP to work off of. It probably won't make a huge difference outside of competitive play, so we'll be leaving her placement untouched. Back to the big buffs though, Mordekaiser received an impactful one this patch. His E's cooldown was reduced by 4 seconds at rank 1. This is a gigantic early game buff that makes aggressive play much more forgiving and also helps him clear waves more frequently. While we kept Mordekaiser in the S tier for his performance in low elo, he's now deserving of this placement at all ranks. Next is a buff for Poppy. Her passive's cooldown was reduced by 3 at all breakpoints. With a lower cooldown, especially 3 seconds less early on, Poppy has access to ranged poke as well as her shield much more frequently. This naturally makes her a stronger laner, and while our analysts don't expect her to push past the S tier, they are acknowledging that there's a chance. After one of the harshest nerves of last patch, Renekton has been buffed this patch to compensate. He received buffs to his health, health per level, and more importantly, his W doesn't lock him down for so long. This leaves Renekton in a better place, he's actionable faster, and the previous nerf that reduces W stun duration isn't as impactful as before. Although his stun is still shorter, a flat health buff should be enough to help him have more presence in the early game and shut down the opposing top laners. We moved him up to the B tier as a result. Finally, we have a small buff for Scion. His W shield was increased by 10. And it's not a huge buff, but it definitely helps him out in the laning phase. There will be rare cases where his shield surviving with less than 10 HP wins a fight, so technically it's also a mid and late game buff. Also, if his shield is up, you could probably blow it up sooner. The biggest effect of this buff is that he'll now win trades by 10 more HP or lose them by 10 less than before. This is an ability that players will have to use nearly every trade, so it'll definitely make a difference. We'll leave him in the A tier for now, although he's a little bit stronger than before. Again, these are the only top lane changes for the patch. This patch is one of the best times to climb with all these changes, and we have plenty of coaches at ProGuides.com that can help you achieve those goals. They'll help you not only adapt to the meta, but will also help you know exactly what you need to work on in order to improve. Check out our website, you can find a coach that specializes in whatever champion that you need help with as well. One final change to this tier list is that we moved Quinn up to the S tier. She's getting picked a lot in Korea, and last patch she ended with a 52% win rate. Her play rate is low, and our analyst still needs some time to assess her strength, but overall she's designed to thrive in solo queue. Her powerful laning and her ability to quickly traverse the map makes her great at picking off straight opponents and snowballing off of leads. In the OP tier we have Camille, Fiora, and Nirelia, followed up by Riven, Mordekaiser, Tom Kench, Jax, Malphite, Wukong, Shen, Mundo, Set, Singed, and Quinn in the S tier. That being said, let's head into the jungle next. In the jungle, our first buff that we have is for Gragas. His W's AP ratio was increased by 10%. Gragas is underperforming in solo queue, and this buff should help him out in both solo queue and competitive play. AP Gragas has destroyed the competition at Worlds in the past, and perhaps we can probably see it happen again. This change isn't enough to move him up its tier, however. Kiana received some changes last patch, but she still struggled in the jungle. This patch is due to yet another jungle buff. Kiana's Q monster damage has been increased, and her QE combo will be more forgiving at close range. 
A lot of Kiana mains mentioned that there were a lot of major issues with the combo that began last patch, and a small fix should be able to make her easier to use. However, with how poorly that she's been performing as a jungler, it's unlikely that this small buff will be enough to push her into the meta. Next we have a buff for Sejuani. With a variety of tanks receiving buffs, we will likely see more of them both competitively and in solo queue. Sejuani's Q cooldown was reduced early on and the damage was increased by 10 this patch, however we'll be leaving her in the B tier for now. I guess if you buff up the champion, it, she doesn't become less boring to play. <laughs> Seriously, I, I don't know how people have fun with her, but if you do, then by all means keep playing her. The only other change in the jungle is that Talia is up to the S tier. After a recent buff, she's seen an increase in both her play rate and win rate. She's currently a training pick in Korea. In the jungle, the OP picks are Lee Sin, Shaco, and Jarvan, followed up by Elise, Fiddle6, Zack, Kindred, Kane, Kha'Zix, Nocturne, Shinzao, Amumu, Lilia, Echo, and Talia in the S tier. Moving on forward, let's go ahead and go through the mid lane. In the mid lane, we'll be starting off with competitive nerf for Rise. As a reminder, this is a patch for Worlds, so solo queue enthusiasts will need to hold on for a patch as these changes will favor players at the top. His Q's AP ratio was reduced and his E's cooldown was increased slightly. These micro adjustments should change specific matchups and also address his late game scaling. While he is weaker, I believe that he'll still be seeing some play competitively. As far as solo queue is concerned, however, we bumped him down to the C tier. Akali has been underperforming as well, but because of how volatile she is to change, the buff that she received was small. Her base health regen as well as health regen growth were increased slightly to assist her during the laning phase and like Gwen, her placement won't move because of this change. Now, here's a big change, and we're actually a revert. Fizz was destroyed by his previous set of changes, and to make him usable at Worlds, he's been rolled back to a previous iteration, and also his E's cooldown was reduced. That's red as a buff, by the way. The reduced E cooldown alongside some ability haste makes him a slippery and annoying little fish that can not only one-shot you, but would avoid what would be a certain death for almost any other character. He's made the jump back up to the S here this patch. Let me also take a second to ask you our question of the day. Which change from the last few patches have you enjoyed the most? I'm personally a fan of the Soraka buff. Although she's OP right now, the change has made a lot of sense since she's literally a heal bot, and she should be better at it than other supports. I'm also glad that they're nerfing her this patch. <laughs> anyway, let me know your answers in the comments down below. Moving forward, Galio was also buffed. While his damage wasn't buffed, his W's cooldown now reduces with level. Some more utility still helps, but we'll leave his placement untouched. Seraphine also received a buff. The cooldown on her ultimate was reduced by 20 seconds flat, enabling her to fight at full power more frequently. In spite of this buff, Seraphine will be remaining in the B tier. Silas is another champion who Riot buffed. Although they wanted to make him stronger, his explosive nature means that they have to give him a small one, extra base mana, and mana per 5 is all he got. This is mostly noticeable during the early game before Silas's first recall, but a buff is a buff and it'll definitely impact his performance in competitive play. He remains in the S tier after this buff. This patch also marks the release of the newest champion Vex. She's unranked for now, but our analysts will continue gathering information on her and we'll have a placement for her in either the mid-patch update next week or next patch. Just in case you're wondering, she won't be available for Worlds. In the mid lane, our OP picks are Zed, Yasuo, and Uction, followed up by Silas, Talon, Annie, Kiana, Diana, Ari, Yone, LeBlanc, Cassidy, Anivia, Vladimir, Katarina, Malzahar, Irelia, Heimerdinger, and Fizz in the S tier. Wow, I did that all in one breath. Anyway, that wraps up the mid lane, so let's go to the bottom lane next. There's not much to cover here, so let's mention the change for Varus. He received a nerf because he was just too powerful in competitive play. This patch, his Q's cooldown was increased by 2 seconds at max rank. He won't be able to poke as frequently, and don't forget the other nerfs that he received before. Put these together and in theory, he shouldn't be as oppressive at the top level. Varus remains in the C tier after this patch. The only other change that we have is that Vayne is in the OP tier and we move Draven into the S tier. Vayne is popping off at the majority of all ranks. With so many other champions nerfed, she finally has a chance to scale up and carry teamfights. Her high mobility and damage makes her reasonably powerful in the hands of any competent player, and a hard solo carry in the hands of a skilled one. Draven and Jin are close contenders for the final spot in the OP tier, they're both solid and if you enjoy playing them, don't hesitate to lock in either of them. The OP bottom lane picks are Ziggs and Vayne, followed up by Ash, Ezreal, Draven, Jin, and Samara in the S tier. Finally, we'll conclude with the supports. Sona has been dominant ever since her rework and Riot has finally decided to address this. Sona has actually been bugged so Riot has fixed these unintended issues. First, her armor was reduced by 2. Now for the bugs. Her Q no longer hits enemies that Sona can't see, and her E's power cord no longer ignores slow resistances. I'll be honest, her Q always hit enemies that she couldn't see, right? Do they just nerf champions and call them unintended bugs? I don't, I don't even know. These bugs gave her a lot more power than intended. In spite of these nerfs, Sona will be staying in the OP tier. 
Straka recently went crazy in a good way. Her ultimate received a massive buff, removing grievous wounds, and her win rate skyrocketed because of it. In both team fights and early game 1v1s, Straka's ultimate made the world of a difference. With the ability being so much stronger, it's received a nerf to the healing portion. Despite this, Soraka remains a powerful pick worthy of the OP tier. We do have a couple changes to mention, however. With the rapid changing meta, Leona has dropped down to the A tier. Facing nerfs and also having to play against buffed enchanters, Leona is a bigger hit or miss than before. You can either blow up the squishies and snowball, or you get slowly poked out and suffer a slow and painful death. Almost like Rel without her horse. A new OP Amumu surprisingly seals her spot in the OP tier. Following massive buffs, Amumu's support has popped off and even if he can't find the kills in the lane, he's still one of the best teamfighters in the game with his incredible crowd control. Thus our OP picks are Amumu, Sona, and Soraka, followed up by Blitzcrank, Thresh, Morgana, Maokai, Zyra, Yumi, Nami, and Lulu in the S tier. Enchanters are finally catching a break this season, and after numerous buffs, the results clearly reflect this. This concludes our patch 11.19 rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what y'all thought in the comments down below, and also check out the description for a link to join our Discord. I wish you guys the best of luck in your games this patch, and until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.